Oke, okay, saya bisa mulai, Pak. Oke. Okay. Announcement, announcement. Good morning for all of presenters and participants. Before joining the agenda, let me explain the rules of this agenda. Please rename your Zoom account. For presenter, you could write your name as a presenter, then your name by capital letter. For participants, you may write as a presenter, as a participant, I mean, then your name by capital letter. And the Lord, for asking, you can type in YouTube live chat, then your name. I mean, hashtag and your question for asking the question in YouTube live session. Those are the rules of agenda today. Thank you. Hmm. Check it in. Hmm. Oke, okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning everyone. For me, today is a great day because I can see 100,000 eyes of successful people in front of me. Let's say, Amin. We ever hear the familiar word or put that's no knowing, no knowing. So now, let me introduce myself. I'm Ajang Supriyono. As master of ceremony, let me guide you in this agenda. The sixth English language teaching technology national conference 2020. We welcome you in this agenda. Your Excellency, Dr. Zainal Afandi, MPD, as director of Nusantara PGRI Kediri University, Respectable Mrs. Koilia MPD as the head of English Department, Nusantara PGRI University. Honorable for Professor Dr. Landes Haji Junaidi, Mr. MPD, PhD from UNISMA. And Dr. Sulistiani MPD from UNP Kediri as keynote speakers. And all of participants whom I love. Okay. Let's thank unto our God who has been giving us some mercies and blessing so we can attend and gather in this nice meeting without any troubles and obstacles in this pandemic. Okay, for presenters and participants, now let me read all of agendas today. First agenda is opening. Second agenda is singing Indonesian anthem. Third agenda is opening address by chair of English department. Fourth agenda is welcoming address by the head of English department, Nusantara PGRI Kediri University. Fifth agenda is official opening by the director of Nusantara PGRI Kediri University. Sixth agenda is plenary session A and B. Seventh agenda is announcement announcement break and preparation for breakout room. Eight agenda is parallel season. And nine, nine agenda is closing and announcement. Okay, those are all of our, our agendas today. Then, before starting our agenda today, let's open our class, let's open our agenda today by reciting Basmala together. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Okay, the next agenda is singing Indonesian anthem for all of participants. Let's sing together.
Thank you very much. Now, we are going to the next agenda, which is opening address by Chief of Organizing Committee, which is delivered by Mr. Mahindra Puji Permana Aji MPD. For Mr. Mahindra, the time is yours. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Thank you very much for Mr. Ceremony on the time. Honorable Director of University of Nusantara Pekiri Kediri, Honorable the Head of English Language Education Department, Honorable Presenter and Participant ELTT 2020, and also special thanks to our keynote speaker, Professor Junaidi Mistar, MPD PhD from Islamic University of Malang, and also Ibu Dr. Sulistiani MPD from University of Nusantara PGRI Kediri. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning. First of all, let us pray praise Wadira Allah Subhanahu wa Ta'ala who give us blessing and mercy to us until this day, this morning. We can together here in Zoom meeting in a good condition. Dear presenter and participant, on behalf of the organizer committees, it pleasure to welcome you to the sixth national conference on English language teaching and education, hosted by English language education department teaching teacher training and education faculty, University of Nusantara PGRI Kediri. This annual conference conducting to provide an opportunity for the teacher, student, lecturer to take a part in academic forum as presenter and also as participant. The theme of this year annual conference is uh, the new phase of education, innovation in practice. It was chosen to accommodate research and experience of the teacher and lecturer in developing English language teaching and research to face a new normal condition. And also your presence and contribution for the sixth national conference on English language teaching and technology 2020 is helping to further develop this meaningful forum. Finally, we would like to express our sense gratitude and appreciation to all of the presenter, 
from Indonesia and also from Malaysia. So thank you very much for the willingness to share and also uh, to share your research and also to share your experience related to the English language teaching. We know that without your effort in this conference would not be possible. The last I say, thank you very much and enjoy the conference. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for Mr. Mahe. Okay. The following agenda is welcome address by the head of English department for Mrs. Koelia, MPD. The times belongs to you. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. It is a great pleasure to welcome you to join the 6th ELTT National Conference hosted by English Language Education Department. University of Nusantara BKRI Kediri. Well, uh, my deep appreciation goes to Bapak Rektor Dr. Zainal Afandi, Magister Pendidikan. Let me give special gratitude to Professor Dr. Andes Haji Junaidi Mistar, PhD, and Dr. Sulistiani, MPD, as keynote speakers. Assalamualaikum, Prof. Jun. Waalaikumsalam, warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Yeah. Okay, How is you. everything? Everything is good. Yeah. <laughs> okay, welcome to uh, UNP Kediri. And thank you very much, uh, Prof. Junaidi Mistar for joining and sharing in this conference. Yeah, it is uh, the set times for Prof. Junaidi to join in our conference. Yeah, thank you very much, Prof. Jun. And then the next, my special thanks to all lectures of English Language Education Department. And also, I respect to all of the participants and presenters who have attended in conference today. First of all, in this occasion, let's say many thanks to God for his grace and place that we can gather in this event in a good condition. I'm happy to see you, although virtually, yeah, because of this condition, now, it is impossible for us to meet uh, face to face. Yeah, so uh, we meet in virtual. Secondly, uh, thanks a lot to the committee, especially to Pak Mahindra as a chairperson in this conference for preparing many things. So this conference comes through. Well, everybody, ELTT National Conference is annual event in English Language Education Department, University of Nusantara, PKRI Kediri. Today, the theme is the new phase of education, innovations in practice. So it is related to this era. So in this conference, Bapak Ibu can share your ideas, experiences, your research finding, and then your knowledge related to teaching and learning in pandemic era 
uh, today. Yeah. So uh, by attending such kind of forum, hopefully we can improve our teaching skills in digital era uh, because nowadays we can see that everything is influenced by technology. So we realize or oh, no, uh, we have to welcome it in our everyday life and also in our teaching. Uh, okay, well, uh, Bapak Ibu, I think that's all for me. Uh, thank you for your great attention. Enjoy this conference. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for Mrs. Kaila Hamidi as the head of English department. Okay, for the next agenda is official opening by the Rector of Nusantara PGRI Kediri University for Dr. Zainal Afandi MPD. We wish you to take the time. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Yang terhormat para keynote speaker Profesor Junaidi Mistar PhD Peneliti bidang strategi pembelajaran bahasa Inggris Universitas Islam Malang Yang saya hormati Dr. Sulistiani Magister Pendidikan Dosen Pendidikan Bahasa Inggris Universitas Nusantara PGR Kediri Yang saya hormati Dekan Fakultas Keguruan dan Ilmu Pendidikan, Ibu Dr. Mumun Nurmilawati, Magister Pendidikan, yang saya hormati Ketua Program Studi Pendidikan Bahasa Inggris, Ibu Koiria, Magister Pendidikan, yang saya hormati Bapak Ibu, peserta Konferensi Nasional ke-6 ILTT tahun 2020. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Selamat pagi, salam sejahtera untuk Bapak Ibu semua. Alhamdulillah, atas limpahan rahmat Allah Tuhan yang Maha Kuasa. Pagi hari ini kita tetap diberikan kesehatan, kita tetap diberikan kekuatan, sehingga bisa hadir mengikuti konferensi nasional ke-6 ILTT tahun 2020 yang kali ini diselenggarakan di tengah-tengah pandemi COVID-19. Bapak-Ibu yang saya hormati, saya selaku Rektor Universitas Nusantara PGR Kediri menyambut baik dan memberikan apresiasi atas diselenggarakannya Konferensi Nasional ke-6 ILTT tahun 2020. Melalui forum-forum ilmiah seperti inilah visi Universitas Nusantara PGRI Kediri, yaitu menjadi perguruan tinggi dengan reputasi nasional yang unggul dan inovatif dalam pengembangan ilmu pengetahuan teknologi dan seni dapat segera dicapai. Selain itu, melalui konferensi ini, paling tidak akan didapatkan inovasi-inovasi baru di bidang pembelajaran khususnya pembelajaran bahasa Inggris. Lebih-lebih, pada saat ini kita sedang berada di tengah-tengah pandemi COVID-19. Tentu ada banyak hal yang harus disesuaikan. Dalam hal ini, salah satu yang harus disesuaikan adalah bidang pembelajaran, utamanya juga pembelajaran bahasa Inggris. Sekali lagi, saya berharap paling tidak di forum ini nanti akan bisa ditemukan inovasi-inovasi baru di bidang pembelajaran yang dapat digunakan untuk pembelajaran di era new normal. Demikian Bapak-Ibu, 
dengan mengucapkan Bismillahirrahmanirrahim Konferensi Nasional ke-6 ILTT tahun 2020 saya nyatakan dibuka dan dimulai. Terima kasih atas perhatiannya. Mohon maaf atas segala kekurangan. Saya akhiri. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Thank you very much for Dr. Zainal Afandi. Following agenda would be plenary session A, then it's followed by plenary session B, which will be moderated by Mr. Agung Wicaksono MPD as moderator. For Mr. Agung Wicaksono, you could take the time. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Waalaikumsalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Morning, Prof Jun. Morning. How is everything with you? Well, thank you. I'm okay. Um, yeah. Today I'm as your moderator. So everybody, uh, today we're going to have Prof Jun from Unisma Malang. Uh, he's been with us since uh, I think now is the third time for us. We addicted. To him, actually, <laughs> then uh, I don't know. It's a long time ago, anyway. Uh, because the research of Prof June is always interesting, and many demands about that one. Anyway, before we start, I would like to talk a little bit about uh, his education background here. Um, Pak June is uh, an undergraduate and graduate program from Ikip Malang. Then the Postgraduate doctoral program from Monash University Melbourne in 2002, um, and also Pak Junsia uh, got the functional position as a professor in 2016. Congratulations, even though a bit late. Then also in a structural position in Unisma. Now he is uh, vice rector one. Yeah, up to now. And the interesting here that I can see that Prof. Jun also got a special training as well in uh, three places. It's very good one. The first one is English for academic purposes for overseas free departure training. I think it's for the person who is going abroad. It's in Denpasar, 1998. And also introductory academic program in Melbourne University. And language classroom-based assessment in Michigan, United States of uh, America. Here um, today, Prof. Jun is going to share with us about um, the developmental stages of L2 learning. So this is talking about the related terms of Industrial Revolution 1.2. Sorry, what? Uh, 1.0, 2.0, 0.0. And also 4.0, um, and then this is connected to a correlation with uh, language uh, learning. Yeah, so we cannot really wait, Prof. Jun. Okay, Prof. Jun, um, for setting the time, so uh, I'll give all the time to you. Okay, time is yours. Okay, thank you very much. Um, Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillah Rabbil Alamin. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billahi al-aliyyul azim. Allahumma salli ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad amma ba'd. The Honorable Bapak Rektor Universitas PG, Nusantara PGRI Kediri, Bapak Dr. Zainal Afandi MPD, the Dean of the Faculty of Teacher Training and Education, Ibu Dr. Mumun Nurmilawati MPD, and the Head of the English Department, Ibu Dr. Anda Khairiyah MPD, 
And my partner, Ibu Dr. Sulistiani MPD, who is going to be um, the uh, keynote speaker for today's sessions. But Mahendra MPD, the chairperson of the organizing committee for the conference today. And Pa Agum, the uh, chair of my sessions. Thank you very much for inviting me to the uh, academic activity at the Nusantara PGRI University Kediri. And this is actually my third time being invited to such kind of activities in this university. That's why, again, thank you very much for the invitation. Then for our um, discussion today, I would like to give a talk on, okay, I'll share my slide. I'll give a talk on the developmental stages of L2 learning, putting theory into practice of ELT. Okay. Um, my talk will be started from what happened in the industrial field in the form of the development of industrial field and then the development in education. Then we come to the development of L2 learning. As we all know, there has been a tendency to use numbers to indicate the monumental significant stages of development of a field. For example, in industry, the developmental stages is, the developmental stages are classified into four to the present time, as we know, Industrial Revolution One or the first Industrial Revolutions took place in the in 1784, when mechanical production machine powered by water and steam was introduced at that time, replacing the manpower. Then almost 10 years later, it was in 1870, electric power was invented so that electric power boost mass productions and productivity in factories. So almost 10 years, sorry, almost 100 years. Again, almost 100 years later, it was in 1969, another great invention was found that is electronics. So through the use of electronics and information technology, further progressions in autonomous productions was carried out. That period, that time was called to be Industrial Revolution 3.0. Then now we come to the Industrial Revolution 4.0, where everything is based on cyber physical systems. There are a number of characteristics of the Industrial Revolution 4.0 some of them are to be mentioned here. The first one is the use of big data. That's what, and I think every one of us already knows about it, that in the storing system of data, we got to know the use of cloud. So cloud storage and so on. Then internet of things. So everything is connected through internet. People, are communicating distantly through internet connections. 
something like what we have now is possible to do because of the internet connection. Another characteristic, another significant characteristics of the industrial era 4.0 is the use of artificial intelligence, robotics, and so on. Okay, that's one side in the development of industry. So we know industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and then now we come to 4.0. Then another field, that's the field of education, which is affected by the industrial revolution. The developmental stages of education is also, um, what is it, um, characterized by the use of numbers. So we get to know education 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and, oh, and 4.0. Education 1.0 is the one that emphasizes on the use of lectures and memorizations. So the learners learn something by memorizing facts. Then we got to know education 2.0, 3.0, then now we come to 4.0, I'm emphasizing on for the the education 4.0, which is innovation producing education. That an education which is directed at producing new innovations, not just producing knowledge as we had in education 3.0. So our ELT is also intended to find, to produce innovations. Good. So in the industry, industrial uh, field, we have industry 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. And then in education, we have education 1.0, 2.0, 3.0, and 4.0. Then, well, actually, we still have some other uh, use of, of numbers to show to indicate developmental stages of things. We also have University 1.0, University 2.0, University 3.0, and University 4.0. But I'm not talking about the university because I would like to get down to the developmental stages of L2 learning. In that case, uh, but before that one, I emphasize on the characteristics of education 4.0, so that when we get down to the discussions of the uh, developmental stages of L2 learning, we can understand much better. What do we mean by education 4.0? This is an education that responds to the need of industry 4.0, where men and machine align to enable new possibilities. As we know, in the industry 4.0, artificial intelligence were, are invented very, uh, very much so that men may have to work together with machine. Then the second characteristic is that education 4.0 harnesses the potential of digital technologies. That's why then in the education 4.0, technology is used. Personalized data, open sourced content. So our instructional materials may be gathered from open sources and the humanity of this globally connected technology-fueled world. Um, in this case, the Education 4.0 also emphasizes on humanity. Then the third characteristic is that Education 4.0 establishes a blueprint for the future of learning. What is the future of learning? That's the lifelong learning from childhood schooling to continuous learning in the workplace to learning to play better role in society. So that in the education 
the learning activities do not take on take place only in the classroom sessions so it can take place anywhere anytime okay so because we have the developmental stages in education education 1.0 2.0 3.0 and 4.0 i then i propose the use of numbers for indicating the developmental stages of l2 learning l2 learning theories and practices in this case instead of starting from 1.0 I propose the use of numbers 0.0 as the starting point. So I call it L2 Learning 0.0. This kind of learning occurred when the instructional process used classical method, which then developed into grammar translation method. Again, the use of numbers here is my own proposal. So probably um, there is not yet any literature um, available for the use of numbers to indicate the developmental stages of L2 learning as I present now. The period of the L2 learning 0.0 occurs be before 1930s from the 16th century, 17, 18, then in the early of the 19th century. At that time, the teaching of a second language was not based on any theoretical basis. At that time, L2 teaching was carried out using L1. So someone learn a new language using his or her own L1. The learning L2 was intended for reading classical text. So there was no need to be able to use the language, the second language, the new language for communication. No, not yet. Because the intended target was for reading classical text. So that in this kind of learning mode, vocabulary teaching and word inflections were taught in the isolated form. So vocabulary teaching, the, the learners will had, uh, had to learn using the list of vocabulary, new vocabulary items, and those vocabulary items had to be memorized. Analysis of the word inflections was dominant. And then also analysis of grammatical items. This kind of um, teaching was actually still prevalent even now particularly, for example, when we studied um, classical textbooks, classical textbooks in Islamic teachings in Pondok Pesantren, usually we learn by using this uh, learning mode. So L2 learning 0.0. But then the next stage was when audio, audio lingual method was proposed that was sometime in 1940s to 1960s i put it number one so learning l2 learning 1.0 at that time there has been a psychology which is called behavioral psychology which was the basis of second language teaching so second language teaching was influenced by behavioral psychology, which then affected the birth of structural linguistics. At that time, there was a belief that language system consists of a finite set of rules 
that may be used for constructing unlimited number of sentences. There was a belief that language system consists of a finite set of rules that may be used for constructing a limited number of sentences. That's why then, because this is the belief, the teaching of a second language should be carried out by teaching the structure. So when we learn a second language, we had to learn the structure of that language. How is it to learn the, uh, the structure? <laughs> Repetition and drills were used at that time. Okay, so grammatical corrections, the, uh, what is it, the accuracy of pronunciations was the uh, main target at that time. Then, the theory, the, the psychology was developing, linguistics was also developing, so that in 1970s, 1960s to 1970s, around 1960s and 1970s, behaviorisms in psychology was criticized by the birth of cognitive psychology. In the cognitive psychology, there was a belief that each child is born with an inner capacity for language learning. Then the birth of cognitive psychology led to the birth of another school in linguistics called generative transformational grammar, replacing the older one, the structural linguistics. As we probably know, some of you probably know that in the generative transformational grammar, there was um, Two concepts were introduced. One is the concept of surface structure and deep structure. The surface structure is the one that we, that we utter in the spoken language or that we write in the written language. Then the deep structure is meaning, the message. Then out of these two structures, the deep structure was considered to be more important because the surface structure was just the result of transformation. That's why then message was emphasized. Then the uh, cognitive psychology and generative transformational grammar led the birth of the communicative approach in the teaching of language. So that in the communicative approach, the teaching of a second language was emphasizing on the communicativeness of an utterance, not on the accuracy, native-like pronunciations and accents, but on the communicativeness of an utterance. That's why then, the communicative approach is quite um, lenient to the uh, learner's errors. But then, again, psychology was developing. That's why then L2 learning was also developing. And then we come and then we have L2 learning 3.0 with the cooperative learning that was in 1990s to 210s, around that one. That's my own um, classifications of uh, time framework, which is influenced by constructivisms in psychology. So in, at, this time, uh, at that time, L2 learning is con considered to be constructed through interactions in social discourse. So, so the role of soci sociology, discourse analysis were prevalent in the 1990s to 200 210s. So that learning was carried out cooperatively and collaboratively. Even now, the use of cooperative learning is still prevalent among us. Okay, 
that's um, L2 Learning 3.0. And then now we come to the, the uh, present time that L2 Learning 4.0, which is influenced by the connectivisms. Connectivism, so connective learning. So we have um, cooperative learning in L2 3.0, L2 learning 3.0, and then in L2 learning 4.0, we have connective learning. Um, this one occurs since nine, uh, 210, around 210. So together with the uh, development of Industrial Revolution 4.0. This kind of learning mode is influenced by connectivisms that the educational theory for the digital age, for example, through the inventions of massive open online course, MOOC, which is now very popular and every uh, institution most of the institutions in uh, higher education institutions and also uh, not necessary to be higher education institutions, even um, senior high schools, um, most of them develop their own, um, what is it, learning management system, LMS. Some of the basic principles of connectivisms is that learning is a process of connecting specialized knowledge or information sources so that um, the learners in the learning process, the learners will have to collect information they gather from, let's say, textbooks, internet, mass media, and so on. From those sources, uh, they are collected and then the learners will construct new knowledge from it then learning may reside in non-human appliances. In the uh, L2 Learning 4.0, the learning activity may take place between human and non-human. Someone may learning without any other human partner. For example, the use of e-learning. So there is no face-to-face -face interactions between the teacher and the students. Then capacity to know more is more critical than what is currently known. It has something to do with the spirit of lifelong learning. So the teaching of um, L2 should also be uh, directed to um, what is it? To train the student to acquire the spirit of lifelong learning. And the last one, I take only four characteristics, four basic principles. Well, actually, there are still some others. Nurturing and maintaining connection between fields, ideas, and concepts is a core scale. That's why integrating information from many sources then from the inter integrations of source of information from many sources, the students will have to screen, then acquire the knowledge. These are the developmental stages of L2 learning theories and how the theories are put into practice so that when, we, when they are visualized in the form of a diagram, we have be behaviorisms in L2 Learning 1.0. Well, 0.0, there is no theoretical basis. That's why I don't uh, put it here. Behaviorisms, um, the L2 Learning, which is uh, affected by behaviorism is 1.0. Then L2 Learning influenced by connectivisms was L2 Learning 2.0. L2 Learning, which is influenced by constructivisms is L2 Learning 3.0, and then the one we have now, L2 Learning, uh, influenced by the connectivisms, is L2 Learning 4.0. The situation here, in ELT in L2 Learning 4.0, is that we have abundant online learning resources are available on the internet. So all uh, online learning resources will have to be selected and then 
um, adjusted to our students' need. They are free to select based on individual need and interest. So we have to know our students' characteristics in terms of the need and interest. Then we select, we adjust our instructional materials with their need and interest. Those learning materials may be used for both independent learning, so for the students, the, the students' own learning activities or classroom learning. Um, the, what I mean by classroom learning here, it can be um, in a face-to-face -face situations, but it can also be in the remote learning. But there is a face-to-face -face situations, but in the remote, learn, remote area, something what we have now, we actually have a face-to-face -face activity, but virtually. Okay. So, that's why then the... Uh, Teaching learning process should be this way. As a good EFN learners, good EFN learners should be ready to involve themselves in learning tasks in interactive cooperative setting. Teacher, student, 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 and student teacher um, collaborative activities, both in face to face setting or presence learning or in the technology mediated setting or distance learning. Good EFN learners should develop communicative skills, both spoken and written, for social and work workplace interactions. Then good EFN learners must be autonomous for lifelong learning. So our teaching learning process should be directed to create uh, our EFL learners to be good ones with these characteristics. Okay, good. So the last, I would like to have a quote from Robin and Thompson here. You, the language learner, are the most important factor in the language learning process. Success or failure will, in the end, be determined by what you yourself contribute. That's why it's not quite fair to blame others for our failure in learning a new language. I think that's all. Thank you very much for, um, for joining my presentation. Then we can go on with the question and answer sessions. Thank you, ba Agung. Back to you. Okay, thank you so much, Prof. Um, now I think uh, we can highlight some very important and interesting from uh, Prof. Uh, June presentations here. Uh, we can know that this of the uh, each era of industry influence us or lead us the way how we learn language. Okay, uh, question, question. I will check some questions here. Okay. Okay, I think this I got one here. It's a quite interesting one. Okay, Prof. Jun here. Uh, in Industry Now 4.0, the role of uh, teaching taken by machine. So if we are learning about the language, are we going to lose about uh, the sense of human? That is the question. Okay, very good. Uh, that's a very good question. Because as, uh, as I told you in my presentations that in the uh, education 4.0, in the L2 learning 4.0, there is a possibility that learning take place with non-human appliances. So we may learn a new language from a non-human appliances. Then the question is, does it affect the humanity? Where is the humanitarian aspect in our learning activities here? Okay, that's a very good question. Look, um, remember that technology is not our master. Technology is a means of doing something. So even our learning activity is mediated by technology. So technology is not the master. Technology is, the, is just a means of doing something. In this case, a means of learning. 
So when we learn something, should we, um, what is it? Should we neglect the aspects of humanism, humanity? No, we still have to consider the aspect of humanity. That's why um, it, it's gonna be wise enough if we blend the face-to-face -face activities of learning and the, um, what is the technology mediated learning without teachers. So we blend, then we call it as the blended learning activities. So in that case, through the blended learning activities, we can still, um, what is it, nurture, develop the humanity aspects of our of ourselves as teachers and also students. Yes, I think that's that, that, that's my ago. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, the next one will be from uh, Regina Maya. Uh, I would like to ask uh, Prof. Jun, is 4.0 learning good for millennial at this time or does it still need development? Is there is still need for development, what kind of things are needed to make learning even better? That is the question, Pak Jun. Okay, very good. Look, as we learned just now that L2 Learning 4.0 is actually influenced by the development of Industry 4.0. So in this case, uh, learning is personalized learning may be carried out independently at the student's own time and so on. So this kind of learning activity really matches with the characteristics of millennials. As we know that the one of the characteristics of millennials is that they are um, they are, they prefer to work uh, independently than, and at the same time collaboratively in order to um, create, to, what is it, to realize their ambitions. So with the uh, learning, L2 Learning 4.0, that really, that really matches with the characteristics of millennials. Millennials like to use technology, technological appliances, and we use very much the uh, technology in the L2 Learning 4.0. So that really matches with the characteristics of millennials. Yes. Okay, thank you. And the next one is from Bu Rika Riwayati Ningse. I think it's your ex-student, yeah. <laughs> there are many <laughs> alumni from uh, UNISMA. Okay, yeah. anyway, much of work field have been taken over by robots, uh, uh, artificial intelligence. Will it become a threat for human? Say your point of view, bro. I think it's about job here. I I'm not sure about threat here means. Okay. Okay, yes, um, textbooks, the printed textbooks may not, oh, what is it, there have been a change, a shift in the uh, learning mode of the uh, printed textbooks. Some of the printed textbooks are now changed into electronic versions so we call it ebook. That's the technology mediated too. So um, of course, it may affect our uh, learning activities. Uh, different strategies may be applied when we are reading printed textbooks and when we are reading, let's say, um, ebook or online text. The strategies may be different. Um, that's why then, well, th this kind of thing is open for further studies. 
uh, research is still much needed to uh, what is it to know more how the students are dealing with the uh, technology mediated um, learning situations. Um, well, of course, the theory is developing. We are now at the, uh, what is it? In our present time, we come to um, Industrial Revolution 4.0, so that core, based on that, I propose the use of L2 Learning 4.0. This is our current stage. And of course, it is developing. Um, industry is developing, and then um, L2 Learning, education is developing. L2 Learning is also developing. So, of course, there will be new mode in the futures, which is different from our world today. That's why then we are, um, of course, we have to prepare for the for any developmental aspects of, let's say, in industry and then education and then in L2 learning. Yeah, so we have to be, what is it? We have to adjust ourselves with the new development. Okay, yes, thank you. I think there will be the last questions. Uh, for you here. Um, what are the weaknesses of education by using technology and how to solve uh, or how to overcome the problem of weaknesses? Thank you. Uh, okay, good. Um, one of the learning modes using technology is something like what we have now. Um, what is it? Something like op distant learning online learning and there are of course some problems we have with the implementations of online learning for example the problem of um, technical issues something like the uh, availability of the connections the availability of the internet connections not all areas where our students are have been covered by uh, internet connections. So there can be a problem. That's one. Another one is probably something like affordability. Whether, because when we learn using technology, we need technology. For example, in the online learning, we need a tool, for example, in the form of our cell phone or um, a laptop. But not all students, particularly for the students in the remote areas, um, have enough money to buy smartphones or to buy uh, computers. Another problem is with the technological literacy of both the teachers and the students. Let's say there have been available internet connections and then the uh, instruments, the tools is already available too. There have been laptops, there have been uh, smartphones, but if the teachers or the students do not have sufficient literacy on how to use the technology for learning activities, then it is also a problem. That's why, of course, such kind of trainings should be designed to, in, to upgrade the technology, technological literacy of both the students and the teachers, especially for the teachers of older generations. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Oh, sorry, Prof. Jun. One more is from YouTube now. Um, okay. Question. Sorry. How about the role of English language teacher in this uh, industry era 4.0, Prof? Okay. Very good. Um, with the development of the uh, um, edu theories of education and also L2 learning, 
of course, there has been a change, a shift in the role of the teachers. For example, when we have when um, we have a face-to-face -face situations, face-to-face -face learning in the old era, the teacher may be the sole source of information, the only source of information, the instructor uh, that. Um, what is it, decide whether something is good or not good, something is to be learned or not to be learned. But then now there has been a change. The students decide their own need, what they want to learn, what it's good to them, and so on. That's why then the, the teacher will have to change, will have to save their role instead of being instructors, then the teachers will have to position themselves to be something like mentors, tutors, facilitators, and so on. The counselors, because the teachers may, may be um, a place for the students to ask for clarifications and so on. Then um, our teaching materials should also be adjusted to the students' characteristics. So in this case, the students, the teacher cannot treat the students equally, all of his students equally, but we have to treat the students based on their characteristics. So there has been a change in the role of the teacher. Yes, I go. Okay, I think another one, very interesting one from Budiani Nur Hayati here. Um, how to promote emotional engagement between teacher and student since the teaching learning process is carried out through online learning? Could you share your tips, bro? Right. Okay. Very good. How How is it to develop emotional um, relationship between the teacher and the students? when the teaching learning process is carried out on learning online in the online mode right um emotional relationship emotional engagement i think it doesn't mean that online learning does not touch emotional engagement between the teachers and the students especially when the teaching learning process is carried out synchronously. That is, there is a face-to-face -face virtual meeting between the teacher and the students. In the face-to-face -face virtual meeting, like what we have now, we can also involve emotions in our interactions. So the teacher may also involve emotional side when they are communicating with their students, even though the teaching learning activities is carried out virtually. For example, in terms of expressions. So we ask the students conditions. How is everything students and so on? Asking about their situation, their health is an indicator that we, are, we care about the students' um, health. That's um, an, a way to engage, to touch uh, emotional side of the interactions between the teacher and the students. And also in the, uh, uh, what is it, tone of voices, tones of voice. And so we use uh, good tones of voice when we are communicating with the students. But the problem may be when we communicate, when we teach the students asynchronously. So there is no direct um, interactions between the teacher and the students. How is it to engage emotional side um, between the teacher and the students? I think we can still develop the emotional engagement between the teacher and the students through the use of 
instructions. For example, let's say we give instructions to our students in our instructional materials, in mm -hmm. our teaching materials, then we choose a good language. When we give instructions, then we give sufficient time for the students. We care uh, of the students' complaints, for example. Let's say, mom, sorry, I cannot send my project on time because of this, 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 this. How do we react on that um, response from the students? That also touches our um, emotional side. Yes, that's the practical tips, I think, Bhagun. Okay, thank you so much. Um, I think it's now a photo session, Rokjun. So I would okay. like to invite uh, Pupair as the head of Elias Sportsman. And okay, uh, so photo I stop the sh screen share here. I go. Okay, good. Okay. Okay, now it's yeah. photo session actually. The first photo session, I uh, invite uh, Mrs. Koyla MPD to take a picture with Mr. Uh, Professor Junaiti and Mr. Lakung. And second photo session with the participants, with all of participants, I mean, with Professor Jun, Mr. Lakung, and Mrs. Koyla. Okay, for Mrs. Koyla, time is yours. When I say one to three, that's the time. Okay, one, two, three. Okay, once again, one, two, three. Okay, now uh, second photo session actually, please turn on your camera for all of participants. We take a picture, okay. As usual, it's last time I want to let you. One, two, three. Okay, thank you very much. That's done. Okay, thank you, Prof. Jun. Okay, uh, thank you, Ba Agung. Thank you, Bu Khair. See yeah. you again. Okay. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi yeah. wabarakatuh. Thank you, Bro. Mohon maaf. Okay. Thank you, Thank you. Okay, good. Thank you. Have a good conference today. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, Ma. Thank you. Okay, good. So I'm leaving now. Mongo. Okay, take care. Enjoy your your weekend. Okay, thank you. You too. Mongo. Thank you, bro. <laughs> Okay, for next session actually, it will be moderated by Mr. Agung, as usual, as plenary session B, time is yours. Okay. Hello, Sulis. <laughs> Okay, um, today we're going to have the second session with two tourists. I would like to read a little bit of um, her story, because I know her so well here. I know, uh, actually, she wrote a little bit, uh, very simple here, but I will add some more here. Okay.
Okay, Bu Sulis, earned uh, her graduate degree in English language teaching from IKBKRI in 2002. And she graduated from Sebelas Marut University uh, from her graduate program in 2009. She was my classmate. And it's uh, lot I enjoy uh, to be with her in Sebelas uh, Marut University. And then uh, she earned a doctoral program at UNESA uh, 2019. So she's been teaching in Olympia Susandara Beke Diki since 2008. So she has a lot of experience. But here, yeah, actually, um, she was a very, very active student when she was in English language teaking Diki Beke Diki um, she joined like English and, and then students now. So actually, she learned a lot uh, from the activities of English at that time. And then, uh, actually, also, she spent almost one semester in the United States of America as a related research for the doctoral program. So, okay, we're just going to talk about more this skill and related to a recent research material. Uh, it will be changed by the principle of a student English skill. Okay, who switch time is yours. So we start to get the photo session first uh, with the choir and before the makeup. Uh, okay, for photo session, I uh, want to lead actually. Then I will count one, two, three as usual last time. So the first photo session, I would invite Ms. Coelia, Mrs. Sulis, and Dragung. On the first photo session, just begin. One, two, three. Okay, twice. One, two, three. Okay, for the next photo session, as usual, participants, listen to the session. So turn on your camera. I want to count. Are you ready? Okay, give your smile. One, two, three. Done. So for this is uh, thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Ajang. Thank you very much, uh, Pak Agung. Well, Honorable Mr. Jainal Pandi, as Director of Nusantara PGRI Kediri University. Honorable Ibu Mumunur Milawati, as the Dean of uh, Faculty of Teacher Training. And then Honorable Ibu Koiria, as the Head of English Education Department. Uh, thank you very much for inviting me to be a speaker here. And my love to everyone who are attending this conference. Hope everyone is happy today and safe from the COVID-19, okay? Well, uh, my talk today is about four C's. Yeah, for C skills and also uh, local wisdom based material to increase students' English and also uh, come, what is it? 21st century skills. Yeah. Let me uh, share screen. Well, here is my topic for skill, uh, for C's skills and local wisdom based material. 
these are uh, strategies. Yeah, I propose them as strategies in developing students' English skills. Well, uh, so far we understand that four C skills are skills to be achieved when learning. Yeah, but today, besides becoming skills to be achieved. Uh, four C skills are also used to achieve skills as well as contents of uh, subjects. And then it is connected with the use of uh, wisdom based, local wisdom based materials yeah, to engage students in more interesting way in learning English, especially. Well, first of all, I would like to. Sorry, why I cannot enter the PowerPoint? Oh, okay. I have to, where is it? A screen show. Yeah. Uh, here are the subtopics that I'd like to talk. The first one is the reason why I choose this topic. And then the second one is about the 21st century itself. And the third one is integrating 21st century skills into EFL learning and also uh, using forces to teach for language skills. And also I'm going to talk about local wisdom based materials. Well, the reason why I chose this topic, uh, I return back to the conditions of the, what is it, the needs of education today. Yeah, in the past, um, it is enough just to be competent in reading, writing, and arithmetic, uh, which is called three R's. But today, it is not enough because of the demand of the century itself. So, our students today must be able to communicate, create, and uh, critical, and also collaborate yeah, with others uh, in appropriate way based on the demands of the 21st century skills. So uh, I would like to continue with the 21st century skills ideas. Uh, first of all, this is the definition of 21st century skill itself. It is a broad a set of knowledge, skills, work habits, and then characteristics that are built by educators, schools, reformers. Sorry to interrupt. Uh, the connection of Mrs. Oli is bad, actually. So we can wait for her. Don't worry about this. Um, I think it's a technical problem that like you can solve. Um, yeah, uh, everybody here. So uh, as uh, Bu Suri told us about the four skills, and then also uh, going to talk about local wisdom. I think that will be very interesting. Yeah, the local wisdom definitely because uh, uh, in the previous uh, session we talk about the robot, talk about the machine taking over the teaching learning process, but now Busul is going to talk about the local wisdom on it. So okay, I think it's ready back to normal. Okay, Busul, sorry, time is yours.
economic, science, ge geography, history, government, and civics. And then learning and innovation skills needed. Uh, creativity and innovation, critical thinking and problem solving, communications and collaborations. And today, we live in technology and technology and media driven environments. So there is an abundance of information, rapid changes in technology, technology tools, and the ability to collaborate and make individual contributions on the unprecedented scales or significant scales so effective citizens and workers yeah, should be able to exhibit a range of functional and critical thinking skills information literacy literacy media literacy ict literacy and today's students need to develop uh, some main important skills that are emphasized in this century. They are thinking skills, content knowledge, uh, social and also emotional competencies uh, to navigate complex lives and work environment. Uh, these skills uh, should be integrated, should be uh, taught in classroom, especially in this case, in our context is language classroom. And then 21st century essential life and career skills that uh, should be accomplished by students or learners. The first one is flexibility and adaptability, initiative and self-direction uh, social and cross-cultural skills, productivity and accountability, as well as leadership and responsibility. Um, these are uh, broad skills that must be uh, owned, that must be possessed by individuals in this uh, era. And then there are five uh, critical support systems uh, to ensure all students receive the kinds of learning experiences that build 21st century competency. So in institutions, yeah, uh, this must be facilitated. Yeah, these are 21st century standards, assessment of 21st century skills, 21st century curriculum and instructions, and 21st century professional development. And then the last one is 21st century learning environment. So when these are well accomplished or well facilitated, uh, it will promote students' development in significant, uh, what is it, achievement. Well, let us continue with uh, talking still about 21st century skills. Yeah. The first 20, uh, the, first, the 21st century uh, skills, yeah, focuses on creativity, critical thinking, communication, and collaboration skills yeah, to prepare students for the future. These are all to achieve the previous, uh, what is it, competencies uh, that are uh, demanded in this era. So the 21st century skills has creative activities that can be integrated into teaching learning process and foster these skills to grow in each skills in the following way. Uh, there are four main uh, skills. The first one is communication and collaboration skills. Uh, which enable students to interact competently and respectfully with others, especially across cultural and diverse and multinational workplaces and communities in our global and digital era. The second one is creative thinking skills, uh, which enable students uh, to think unconventionally uh, questions, imagine new scenarios, and produce astonishing work 
since many of the fastest growing jobs and emerging industries rely on workers creative capacity so uh, today's workers today's uh, students should struggle to achieve this uh, skills yeah to be able to cope with the real life problems or our future and then the next one is critical thinking and problem solving these are skills which enable students to judge the information that comes their way every day yeah for example on the web in the media in homes workplaces etc it empowers our students to assess the accuracy and the value information, analyze and evaluate information, make recent decisions, and also take purposeful actions. Uh, those mentioned skills yeah, can be integrated in classroom activities. Yeah, it includes in four foreign language skills. Uh, which are uh, speaking, reading, writing, and also uh, listening. Yeah, based on Pandino 2017, EFL classrooms need to be filled with meaningful and intellectually stimulating activities, practices, and processes to articulate thoughts and ideas effectively using oral, written, and nonverbal communications. And plus, to understand complex perspectives, make judgments and decisions. Yeah. Uh, so, these all uh, skills yeah, can be taught using the skills yeah, uh, provided in the 21st century uh, skills. And then teachers need to analyze critically what the 21st century movement offers in order to enrich their pedagogical processes and instructional uh, practices. And Tevila in 2016 yes, said and argued that uh, forces in EFL classes can turn a typical grammar lessons into something magical uh, like teachers as an active facilitator students becomes inspired and self-guided learners yeah with those skills yeah uh, these uh, what is it these roles can be achieved when they are implemented well when according to Hal Forsen 2018, all four language skills can be easily uh, activated when students are asked to research a topic, discuss or debate that topic with peers and write about what they find. Uh, from here, we can directly see that this can also uh, develop written and oral uh, competencies. Well, students even at lower intermediate levels can conduct basic research and have meaningful discussions with peers about real issues. They can make short films, for example, interviews, compare statistical data, act in place, prepare presentations, join debates and try to find solution to certain problems which will promote their communicative, creative, critical thinking and collaboration skills by working in groups. Uh, that is why uh, to promote students' engagement in classroom activities, uh, to do all the activities, uh, Usually, it will be more effective when they do it uh, cooperatively in a cooperative learning model. Okay, language teachers need to explicit, 
explicitly teach students how to communicate effectively in real life situations, both for play and writing, to understand the role of effective communications as global citizens. The second one is cooperate with others and appreciate teamwork. And the third one is be creative and innovative to find out different ways to tackle problems and not be afraid of taking risks. Then be critical thinkers and problem solvers to solve out the overload of information available at their fingertips. Yeah. Well, the four C's, yeah, the first one is communication skills. Um, in this point, I would like to uh, share some question and answers dealing how to integrate, yeah, how to include or how to practice uh, communication skills in classroom. Yeah, the goal here is to communicate in that language. Yeah, uh, for example, when learning English. Yeah, students are expected to be able to communicate in English. Yeah. They have to be able to articulate thoughts and ideas effectively using oral, written, and nonverbal communication skills in a variety of forms and contexts. Listen effectively, use communication for a variety of purposes in diverse environments. Then how to emphasize communication skills in general and how to enhance oral and written communication skills in particular in our classroom and how to encourage students to give oral presentation to varied communi community audience, audiences and how can students be encouraged to use technology and new media to communicate innovatively and effectively. Yeah, there are so many questions here. And uh, this uh, description will try to answer this question. Yeah, here is uh, the answer. By assigning students to search for current issues and prepare an oral presentation using posters, for example, slides, and discuss it with their friends in the classrooms. And we can promote our students' communication skills by providing them with authentic or real-life situations to talk with their peers and also make them use of contemporary technological tools such as social media, blogs, web 2.0, email groups, Google classes, etc. Uh, in our class, in my class, for example, uh, we make use of variety of device uh, appliances uh, such as uh, WhatsApp groups, for example, Telegram groups, and also Zoom meeting, sometimes we use Google Meet and also um, Google Classroom, etc. So there are some technologies that can uh, promote our teaching and learning process during this um, condition, this remote conditions. The second 21st century skills uh, is collaboration skills. Yeah. Uh, collaboration is the practice of working together to achieve a common goal. Practicing collaboration helps students understand how to address a problem, fit solutions, and decide the best course of actions. And then 
how can we create a learning environment that emphasizes emphasizes collaboration skills and provide students opportunities to work in diverse teams yeah to improve the four language skills structure the collaborative work among our students to provide explicit instructions that encourages development of skills such as coordination communications conflict resolutions decision making and also problem solving and negotiations uh, these activities yeah, can be conducted uh, collaboratively usually when we put students in groups and we can design not only to achieve one scale only but we can integrate yeah all the scales yeah in these activities yeah uh, but again it depends on the main what is it, the main scale that uh, we have plans in our uh, teaching plan yeah but when we want to integrate those all four scales these activities can be done in classrooms, yeah. And then, uh, how again, yeah, creating digital resources, for example, uh, and also presentations, project uh, together with other students, uh, will make classroom activities, yeah, and then writing a short story, completing a half story, making short films on a given topic, drawing conclusions from reading materials are also, uh, what is it, are meaningful yeah, to achieve uh, collaboration skills. Yeah? So doing uh, collaboration as well as achieving the collaboration skills. Well, next, the third 21st century skill is creativity skills. Creative activities are tools which allow students to express what they have learned in a new way. When the right conditions are given, everyone is capable of being creative, especially in language, as language enables us to create new associations, playful combination, and new meanings. Yeah, uh, this is also argued for by Malay and Bulito in 2015 research. Then how can we incorporate more creativity and innovations into our lesson plans and encourage students to be more creative and innovative. Yeah, for promoting creativity skills, students can do activities like brainstorming, group projects, rewriting, writing an essay, poems, ending a film or story in another way, drawing after listening by using imagination using web to point or tools for creating new products and game like activities yeah uh, these are uh, suggestions that can be used to achieve creativity skills yeah but uh, i myself is not uh, what is it i'm still learning also yeah to use this activities yet sometimes uh, we practice them in a classroom but um, sometimes we plan it not in systematic way so uh, the results may be uh, not satisfactory but uh, to do this all yeah uh, again uh, teachers yeah or lectures, 
and also uh, pre-service teachers need to have good plans. Well, the next uh, skills is critical thinking and problem solving skills. Yeah, what is critical thinking skills? Yeah, critical thinking skills is an individual's ability to use a number of his or her general cognitive processing skills, which falls into high order thinking levels of analyzing, evaluating, and constructing new ideas or creating and which enables students to think deeply to solve non-familiar problems in different ways. Yeah. Then how can we model critical thinking or problem solving for our students and what kind of learning environment is needed to be set for emphasizing problem solving skills and encouraging students to be better critical thinkers in a more intentional and purposeful way of uh, way in our classroom. Yeah, according to Cleanout 2018, yeah, to promote critical thinking in a lesson, yeah, we can avoid display questions with which are questions with only one right answer or that can be answered with no. Yeah, instead we can ask, for example, how do you know, blah, 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 what tells you, blah, 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 and why. Uh, with these questions, students will uh, more critical yeah, in answering these questions. Uh, students can, uh, develop their critical thinking yeah, by uh, what is it? Uh, finding the answers that they can create based on their own knowledge. And yeah, they can uh, produce their answers yeah, based on their own knowledge and experiences, not based on, for example, in reading text, based on the uh, factual knowledge that are already stated in the text. Yeah. So uh, open questions, yeah. Open-ended questions are suggested yeah, to develop a student's critical and not close questions or display questions. Um, do you think that display questions are not needed in this context? Perhaps uh, everyone think or questions this, uh, what is it, this question. Well, they are of course still needed, yeah. They are of course still needed to guide students, yeah, to what is it, display facts, yeah, before they uh, evaluate, they make analysis of the facts and then uh, make conclusion, draw conclusion and uh, decide a solution. So uh, both kinds of questions are of course used yeah, in teaching learning process, but for critical thinking and problem solving skills, we have to include yeah, open-ended questions to train students to think critically. Well, here are uh, some practices that can be adopted, adapted, and uh, can also be used uh, directly by teachers, yeah, or educators or pre-service teachers, yeah. Uh, students will do some real practices in schools. Yeah, uh, this will be what is it? 
tips ya tips how to use and also to develop the four C skills ya there are three simple steps ya although it is called simple steps but these steps need to be planned well in order that it can be practically uh, what is it it can be easier to be used yeah, in classroom so we have to adapt for example the readability and also uh, level of difficulties yeah uh, to the learners needs yeah, and so on yeah the first step is from critical and creative thinking. The second step is from communication and collaboration. And the third step is uh, present or presenting the, for example, the results of discussion uh, from the previous activities. Well, let me break down the steps into more details uh, description in order that you can be inspired with these ways. Yeah. In the step one, a teacher can prompt critical and creative thinking in this in these ways. Yeah. After introducing and modeling a new concept from students to think critically and creatively about it with individual activities such as sentence completion yeah, and then definitions, problem solving, clustering, modeling, and questioning. Yeah. These steps actually adopted the steps of research. Yeah. So in sentence completion, you can ask students to complete the sentence in as many ways as possible. So students can uh, receive brainstorms and uh, produce or express their thoughts and ideas uh, to complete the sentence uh, prompted by teachers. The second one is ask students to define a key term, providing its denotation along with examples, for example, uh, synonyms and also antonyms. Yeah. This can develop our students or oh, what is it? Language skills as well as leading students to understand the topic being discussed. Because, for example, a one term can have several definitions and then to focus on one uh, topic, yeah. There must be uh, guidance from the teacher through uh, choosing the students. Um, what is it? Generated uh, definitions. Then the next step is problem solving. Teachers can ask students to list ways that a problem could be solved. Yeah. So still students can uh, express their own thoughts yeah, to give alternative of solving problems. Yeah. Or uh, by proposing uh, can be one or more than one uh, solutions to a problem uh, posed by teachers. Then clustering, our students to write an important concept in the center of a piece of paper and to create as many connections as they can uh, to the, what is it, the circle, for example, uh, made by students 
that is already words yeah and then modeling teachers can ask students to represent a concept visually whether in a form of a sketch a diagram a symbol or some other form yeah another way is through questioning our students to write five questions about the current topic and to pick the most interesting one so basically all these alternative ways are for students yeah to generate their background knowledge about the topic and to what is it uh, to produce as many as possible what uh, knowledge they have yeah in these uh, steps so teachers can also know yeah uh, the knowledge and skills the students initially have before moving forward to uh, the next what is it, the next uh, scale well okay the second step is from communication and collaboration after individual work students turn to a classmate or small group to share their ideas students take something written and internal and make it spoken and external which makes students think critically and creatively with each other the quick activities to involve ones the first one is see like a thought yeah by asking students to share their ideas with a partner or small groups and work together to select one specific thought they find most interesting uh, to person or uh, to undergo. And then in wild tears, our students to share their ideas with a partner or small group and decide which ideas is the most out there, which means unique and perhaps a little wacky. Yeah, ask students to be able to indicate why. Yeah, summarize. Uh, sorry, this is uh, the next the next way. Yeah, after while here, students can uh, summarize. So teachers can ask students to share their ideas and create statement that summarizes what they have found. Yeah. And then the next way is advocate. Our students pairs uh, to select one idea from each student, then have the opposite partner advocate the idea, presenting reasons to support it. The next one, students can do uh, drama, yeah, so uh, dramatize yeah, by asking students to share ideas and choose one idea that will uh, that they will dramatize for example in a 30 second public service announcement which they will act out in front of the class yeah dramatize here uh, can be a cause of demonstration usually well and then rapid prototyping by asking students group to select an idea and create a rapid prototype of the concept, for example, a drawing, model, program, or other representations of how it might work. Yeah. These are ways uh, to promote communication and collaboration the next one this is the last step of the three simple steps 
the test uh, presentation. Yeah. So students share their group's ideas with the whole class. Yeah. One person as the main presenter, but all members should participate in some way. For example, in uh, group one, when consisting of five students, one becomes presenter and the other four perhaps takes role as, uh, for example, moderator or uh, not to list, yeah. And then uh, answering questions from other participants, yeah. And then these steps require small critical and creative thinking, communicating and collaborating in yeah, this uh, presentations needs to be uh, need to cover this what is it this criteria it also bonds the concept teachers are trying to teach yeah through presentation and then finally when students know they will need to share that they come up with they have a reason to care about their work they put in. So the presentation activities uh, are usually uh, conducted yeah, in our class already. Yeah, and through uh, presentations, yeah, hopefully all students can have the competence needed, yeah, but sometimes, uh, especially in uh, remote learning, it is quite difficult to know uh, which students are uh, contributive to the discussion and which students are not. Uh, but uh, of course, we uh, find other ways, yeah, or uh, find ways, yeah, to tackle this, uh, what is it, constraints or difficulties. Well, in the 21st century skills, yeah, or uh, as presented by uh, Prof. Junaidi Mister, the students can access their own materials from other resources in this era. There are many resources that can be used yeah, for teaching. And one of them is local wisdom-based materials. Why local wisdom-based materials? Because these kind of materials uh, can be use yeah, to educate students with their uh, needed characters yeah, besides developing uh, language skills. So uh, it is very, very valuable uh, kind of material uh, which can be used to develop both uh, that is it's emotional or characters as well as uh, language skills. Well, oh sorry. A local wisdom can be a cult, yeah. Local wisdom, people knowledge, local knowledge. Yeah, folk knowledge, indigenous knowledge, or traditional wisdom. Yeah, based on uh, Santosa Basuki and Postitas uh, terms. And then local wisdom contain local ideas. Yeah, that contain a wise, prudent, good value that is built and obeyed by the members of the community. So these are 
form ya yeah, one form of local wisdom based on Kun in his research in 2013. Then local wisdom can also be a view of life and science as well as a variety of life strategies in the form of activities carried out by local communities and answering various problems regarding their needs. And also local knowledge, yeah, which is can, uh, sorry, uh, local knowledge here is already uh, mentioned. This is uh, one form of uh, the definition of uh, local wisdom, yeah. Uh, sorry, one form of a uh, local wisdom based material, yeah, which can be everything that is characteristics of a region, whether it be food, customs, dances, song, ceremonies, regions, yeah, according to Hila and his research in 2014. Then According to Santosa Basuki and Pospita, uh, indigenous or local advantage can also be called a local wisdom, can be uh, termed as a local wisdom, which is everything that characterizes regionalism, including economic aspects, culture, tradition, information technology, communication, and also ecology. There are eight characteristics of local wisdom-based materials according to Akbar's research conducted in 2013. Yeah, the criteria that must be met includes uh, accuracy, yeah, uh, the material should be accurate. The second one is suitable. In this case, suitable with the student's characteristics and needs. And also uh, must be communicative, complete and systematic, student-centered in line with nation's ideology, uh, linguistically appropriate and readable. Yeah. Um, without readability, it is um, useless because it cannot be implemented in easy way in classroom practices. Then to con conclude uh, my talk today, here are some uh, summary. Students should possess the skills and competencies that our century looks for to be prepared for the challenges of society and the workforce. And the partnership for 21st century skills presents four C's. They are communication, collaboration, creativity, and critical thinking skills as the main skills of learning and innovation in the 21st century, as they are foundational essentials for success in college, yeah, university, careers, and life outside educational institutions, these skills are supposed to be focused essentially to prepare students for the future. Teaching critical thinking and problem solving effectively in a classroom is vital for students because today's citizens must be active critical thinkers. If they are to uh, compare evidence, evaluate uh, competing claims and make sensible decisions. Then communication skills are closely related to collaboration skills, such as working effectively 
with diverse teams, making necessary abrupt uh, compromises to accomplish a common goal, and assuming such responsibility for collaborative work. Collaboration is necessary for students due to globalization and the rise of technology. As a result of students working collaboratively, the group can generate more knowledge, making collaboration a key ingredient to student success in today's global society. Besides, innovation springs from, uh, sorry, not from individual thinking and working alone, but through cooperation and collaboration with others to draw on existing knowledge to create new knowledge. Yeah. Then forces scale should not only be taught, but also used uh, for teaching. So students can uh, do uh, learning by doing. Yeah. Uh, to achieve the scale through using those scales like that. Local waste material should be incorporated uh, because it can elicit students' background knowledge, internalize and appreciate local values, as well as solving local real life problems, besides for contextual language learning. Yeah, uh, I think that's all for the presentation today. Thank you very much for joining, uh, sorry, for uh, listening to my presentations. Uh, any questions are welcome. Thank you. I return it to the moderator, Pak Agung. Okay. Thank you very much for Dr. Sulistiani. Uh, I think that is a very interesting one because uh, before the previous one is talking about the robots, now talking about the character, right? So it's a good combination, I think, the first session and the second session. So yeah, I can say that um, the skills and also the character when we are learning the language uh, should be according by the students when they are in the class. So while waiting for, uh, I'm waiting for the questions now, I'll check in the chat. So please, everybody, if uh, you have a question in the chat, where uh, Abu Sulis can have rest for one or two minutes. <laughs> Take a deep breath too, before you are talking again. Thank you, Baku. Okay, come up um, down here. Okay. So here, um, as we know that is the generation now, and even the government a bit worried about the character. Um, we are talking about, remember the Japanese character about Molimo? So Molimo is the bad thing, so people always say don't do Molimo, like Maling and so on and others. And then here, uh, how we can uh, combine the material that gave a message about our character in Japanese about Molimo. I still remember though when I was in elementary school, it's about uh, Kancil Nyolong Timun, Bu. Do you remember that one as well? So I think there is a yes, message yes. over there. So please uh, give me more ideas about that one. Give the message about our Japanese character in the material. Thank you. Yeah. Uh, can you please break down what is Molly Mo, Pak Agung? I cannot really all remember, Bu. <laughs> That's why. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, actually. I think it's about Maling, you know, allowed to be a thief. And then we know mean we not allowed to get drunk. Mm -hmm. or, oh yeah, mine mean we cannot really uh, play uh, in like gambling or something like that. Is that true? Mm -hmm. And then the other one is um is I think it's what mito yeah. mito mean adultery I think. Then one more one more anybody? <laughs> hey, you are the generations. Come on, the young generation. More and more our Japanese. Uh, so our parents always say, don't do more limo. I only know four. Sorry, Bu uh, I'm yeah. quite bad generation then. <laughs> <laughs> I admit it, actually, I admit it. Uh, sorry. 
Yeah. Uh, we are in the same generation, Bagong. Yeah, old. Uh, we experience old and new generation because uh, uh, we what is it? We experience uh, the learning process without laptops, without internet, without what is it? Gadget and so on. And up to now, we can enjoy yeah, everything that uh, are available in markets yeah, like uh, smartphones and also uh, sophisticated laptops and so on. Yeah. Well, return to uh, the internalization of character education yeah, to what our parents thought uh, in our family. Uh, well, as I explained before, that activities, yeah, activities can also become uh, local wisdom based materials. For example, uh, we can, what is it, uh, make students do some, some observations, for example, uh, by, uh, what is it, uh, remembering or seeing or expressing experiences they find in everyday life about good and bad characters, for example, by doing a brainstorming and then make, uh, they can make a comparison uh, and then uh, evaluate why people uh, today um, still still something. Yeah? Uh, there are some individuals who still do some crimes, for example. Uh, students can be critical to make analysis and then also uh, evaluate uh, what are presented by uh, what is it our environment uh, today yeah what we found in our environment today and also perhaps can criticize the uh, policies from uh, the government uh, dealing with uh, education for example yeah. So students can discuss those all things yeah, for speaking practices. After that, they can write down. Yeah. So it becomes a writing activities. And then in speaking activities, when one student uh, present their conclusion after making decision in their groups, they can present on their ideas. So other students can practice listening. And perhaps after their writings, their writing can be used as a source of reading uh, text, for example. Yeah, so there are a lot of, uh, what is it? Local wisdom materials that can be utilized uh, to develop uh, language skills, as well as internalize uh, what is it? character education. So, for example, through working in groups, students can practice how to cooperate with others, how to work with teams, for example. And also, students can also, what is it? Uh, uh, learn what is bad, what is good, yeah, why they should be uh, like this, why they should be like that, and so on. And then uh, with local wisdom based activities, more knowledge, yeah, from other peers or friends uh, can also be absorbed by other students yeah based on their own experience yeah uh, like what you 
told me kan cel nyolong timun is a story ya yeah, is a story with contain some moral values ya yeah, that doing bad things can have also bad results for uh, for the the what is it? the player or the it itself himself oh, yeah uh, yeah uh, someone who behave uh, bad things will find bad things will get bad things will uh, have bad results also yeah like that pak agung uh, does it answer your question Definitely, but it's very uh, interesting the questions over there. Sometimes now the new generation make a joke about kancil nyolong timun. They say, oh, it's not tolong timun anymore. It's nyolong mobil now, like that one. <laughs> Sometimes they make a joke like that. Right? But anyway, so definitely I like that your idea about uh, learning and also uh, learning from the character and also the skills of that same time. Okay, the next one is from Istiqomah Ardila. Uh, can you give tips or strategies how to make students work collaboratively in online learning? Thank you. Okay, thank you for the questions. Let me uh, try to uh, to answer. Yeah, in online learning, yeah, we usually imagine that in online learning students can only work individually, but it can be, or is it can be uh, designed yeah, to work in groups as well. For example, uh, students can make a group through uh, WhatsApp group and then um, Telegram group. Yeah, When they have to, what is it? to cooperate with each others in uh, doing a task, for example, they can discuss, yeah? they can discuss uh, via uh, WhatsApp groups or Telegram groups, or when in virtual learning like this, in face-to-face -face, uh, virtual learning, uh, students can also, uh, what is it? make a discussion in room chats yeah and then uh, followed by uh what is it making an appointment yeah to make to make a group yeah can be uh, through whatsapp telegram and perhaps uh, other appliances yeah like that Oke, okay, uh, the next one is from Rahmat Agung Azmi Putra. Oke. Okay. Okay, the first one, the, uh, he said thank you very much, Bruce Lee, for the great presentation. I'm going to ask about the global moral values that should be integrated in language learning. How could the teachers combine both the global moral values and the local wisdom in their practices, especially in online learning? Thank you, Pusulis. Stay safe. Okay, integrating uh, what is it? Uh, global values. Uh, yeah, global values. 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 Yeah, and also local, yeah, yeah. Uh, and online learning. Yeah. yeah. Uh, when we what is it? We we plan yeah to have the Uh, to read the global values, yeah. Uh, we put the goal first, yeah. What is to be achieved? Uh, what should students learn? And then we design, yeah, some competencies, some sub competencies that promote uh, the what is it? The competen uh, global competencies itself, yeah, through. Uh, breaking down uh, the competencies into smaller uh, parts in order that it is uh, workable and can be practiced in uh, classrooms. Yeah, in uh, in the case of yeah online learning, 
Yeah. Uh, just like uh, in our teaching learning process, yeah. Uh, each sub skills or each sub uh, competencies that we have uh, divided, uh, we have plans, yeah, to be achieved by the students, yeah. Uh, still can be practiced yeah, through online learning. For example, in, uh, in achieving the competence, for example, students must have, uh, must love the nations, for example, in character education, yeah. or students must be able to collaborate yeah, to work collaboratively with other students yeah uh, just make students yeah work in groups yeah like what i have explained to answer but this pak agum mbak istiqomah ya ilia umaroh yeah uh, like that so oh, yeah, Istiqomah. <laughs> Next one, that one for you. Uh -huh. Yeah. So we, when making a plan, when making a lesson plan, for example, uh, we put the big goal and then we break down into uh, sub goals, yeah, to be practiced in classrooms, for example, uh, to achieve, uh, what is it, the students must be able to work collaboratively yeah in classroom practices we can ask students yeah to work in groups by assigning them uh, to do something yeah yeah like what i explained they can be done uh, through uh, whatsapp and then uh, what is it uh, through uh, telegram when doing asynchronously, but when in synchronous way, they can uh, still present their, for example, their ideas, yeah, in groups, although they are in different places, yeah, as the results of uh, their discussion in uh, WhatsApp groups, for example, like that. Uh, yeah, hopefully this can answer your question thank you uh, i think this is the last question from youtube now uh, from lia umaro okay uh, the question is how do we implement the critical thinking in virtual classroom thank you uh, critical thinking in virtual classroom, classroom. yeah uh, like uh I have said, yeah, in the first, uh, sorry, in the three simple steps, yeah, in the three simple steps. Oh, let me go back here. This is a uh, creative and then Yeah, critical thinking. Yeah, online. Yeah. Okay. Uh, you uh, teachers, uh, perhaps can, for example, uh, give the concepts to students. Yeah, give the concepts to students for via flip classroom, for example, uh, in which students can get the. Uh, materials from the teacher yeah, to be read individually yeah and then in the virtual class for example uh, via zoom yeah we can discuss and yeah, we can discuss with students yeah or uh, perhaps before making group uh, students can to uh, individual uh, activity uh, through answering questions from 
teacher or completing sentence from the teacher like this yeah asking students to complete the sentence in as many ways as possible yeah students first can work individually and then uh and then make to finish uh can also make definition yeah by asking students to define key term providing its uh, denotation along with examples blah 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 yeah uh, all this can be applied yeah all these activities can be applied So students, while answering this question individually, yeah, of course, students uh, are in critical thinking because uh, as I said before that in answering, for example, open-ended questions, yeah, students need to be critical so they can uh, post or they can express their thoughts based on their own knowledge and experience yeah by uh what is it some analysis yeah can be individually and then after that to be more to be more what is it uh, to be deeper in discussion, uh, they can also make a group via WhatsApp or pair work yeah, via WhatsApp to compare their answers and also uh, evaluate each other's uh, answers and then make decision together. After that, uh, drawing conclusion or what is it um, then creating for example a model yeah which can be done uh, through uh, unsyn asynchronous way so this can be done uh, to train students to be critical can be in synchronous or unsynchronous way yeah so uh, we post questions actually can also be asynchronously yeah for students yeah to answer and then students after doing brainstorming their answers students can work together with their friends yeah through uh, a group making group via uh, whatsapp or uh, telegram or maybe at the uh, platform yeah to make uh, further discussions yeah by comparing their answers uh, making uh, choice yeah and then making conclusion after that uh, presenting their answers through presentation yeah these activities uh can be critical yeah, to train students to be critical okay thank you so much Ms. Ulis. so uh yeah, welcome yeah uh i think this is the time is up to this session i would like to say uh thank you thank you so much so please uh personally and also i'm honored to be your moderator and then uh, thank you everybody. I'm back to give the time to MC Masatya.
Sorry, there is trouble. Is my voice clear? Okay. Okay, thank you very much for Mr. Lagung. So, the next agenda, we are going to the next agenda, which is announcement. Here, I want to announce for you all, for presenters and participants, for the presenters, you could take the room based on your schedule. And for the participants, you may take and choose what room that you like. For the committee, please help me to let them in parallel session in a breakout room for several minutes. I place you to lead them for Sultan and others. Time is yours. Okay, the Honorable of Mr. and Mrs. President and all of participants will come to the parallel season ELTT virtual conference.
ਰੁਕਣਾ ਮਿੱਥਾ ਸਕਿਆ ਰੁਕਣਾ Thank <laughs> you. 
pasok ay yung Kasi suara mo
was pretty.
Welcome international people. Yuk kita jalan-jalan ke Brodi Bahasa Inggris. Eits, tunggu dulu. Kenapa sih mereka memilih English Department when they diri? Sudah pasti dengan dosen-dosennya yang berkualitas. Tentu saja karena fasilitasnya yang lengkap. Karena di sini mahasiswa berkesempatan untuk mendapatkan beasiswa. Kita lagi ada ISR nih. Foto referensi skripsi. Di sini nih tempatnya. Sini nih, lab prodi pendidikan bahasa Inggris. Di lab ini kita melatih skill listening kita. Let's go. Menarik bukan prodi kita? For more information, you can find it here. You join English Department.
Okay, welcome back to main room for everybody. Are you still spirited in this agenda? Okay. For the next agenda, actually, is wait, wait. Okay. Before that, I wanna announce actually the last two sessions that present or attendance list. Actually, last morning, you have filled the presence or attendance list and another session is now. So you can click your attendance list below. Please the committee, show the link. And then for the last agenda, which is closing ceremony announcement, which is closed by Mrs. Koilia MPD. But I want to give the information for all of participants. For the information is a certificate will be sent into your email after conference date. For the second is full paper submission to the 28th of November 2020. And for more information, you may click the link which is provided by the, com the committee. Those are the information. Thank you very much for joining this agenda. I'm Ajang Supriyono. I want to say sorry for any mistakes during this agenda. Wassalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. For Mrs. Koyria MPD, please take the time. Yeah. Well, uh, good afternoon all the participants yeah okay everybody finally the conference has been done and run smoothly yeah alhamdulillahirabbil alamin on behalf of the committee of the 6th ELTT national conference hosted by english language education department Nusantara PGRI Kediri University, I would like to say thank you very much for your presentation and also for your sharing your uh, experiences. If we have any mistakes, forgive us. And also, don't forget, you are inviting for the 7 ELTT National Conference it will be had on next year. Yeah, hopefully you can join us again. Yeah. Okay. See you on the next ELTT conference. Happy weekend and goodbye. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Sekarang di foto session Di foto session Balik pak Ayo nana Ayo nara Ayo nara Ayo nara Ayo nara Ini para panitia Same idea Yang telah memeriahkan Suara kurang banter loh. Melaksanakan tugas memberi.
Foto bareng, foto bareng, foto bareng. Selamatkan Thank you. Gimana di rumah? Itu salah tombeng. Eh. Welcome international people. Yuk kita jalan-jalan ke Prodi Bahasa Inggris. Eh, tunggu dulu. Kenapa sih mereka memilih English Department when pergi diri? Sudah pasti dengan dosen-dosen yang uh-huh. berkualitas. Uh-huh. Itu saja karena fasilitasnya yang lengkap. Hai guys. Kembali lagi. Kita lagi ada ISR nih. Foto referensi skripsi. Di sini nih tempatnya. Anu, Richis nak berarti, pak. Di sini nih, library pendidikan bahasa Inggris. Kita melatih skill sini kita. Let's go. Menarik bukan prodi kita? For more information, you can find here. You join English department. Satu, dua. Satu, dua. Hahaha. 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 Haha